This is Jeff Chandler. This is Anne Blythe. And this is Hugh Douglas saying, Welcome to Hollywood Soundstage. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, the doors of our Hollywood soundstage open to the promise of high dramatic adventure. 30 minutes of absorbing entertainment made possible through the combined and generous cooperation of the entire motion picture industry. Our play tonight is strange and compelling, a provocative story filled with suspense. It stars Anne Blythe as the lovely young girl and Jeff Chandler as her Uncle Charlie. Hollywood soundstage is proud to bring you Universal International's great dramatic success, Shadow of a Doubt. Starring Jeff Chandler, Anne Blythe, and the Screen Guild Players. The Merry Widow Wars. I guess you all know the Merry Widow Wars. But have you ever heard it played in church? <laughs> strange, isn't it? But then everything about this story is so strange. Right from the beginning. I suppose the beginning was that day at home. You see, we live in Santa Rosa, a little town in Upper California. A very little town where nothing ever seemed to happen. And I guess that afternoon it had me down a bit. Now, Charlie, that's no way to talk. What's the matter, Charlie? Don't you feel well? Oh, I'm feeling perfectly well, Mother. I've just been thinking, that's all. And I come to the conclusion that I give up. I simply give up. Give up what? <laughs> Dad, have you ever stopped to think that this family's just gone to pieces? We have. Of course we have. We just sort of go along, but we don't get anywhere. Oh, I don't know, Charlie. The bank gave your father a raise last March. The second raise in five years. Oh, money... How can you talk about money when I'm talking about souls? What we need is someone to take us out of this rut. <laughs> Have you any suggestions? Well, I was thinking that... Mother, I'm going to wire Uncle Charlie. Darling, you're not going to ask for money. Oh, of course not. Money wouldn't help. I'm going to invite him here for a visit. Now, now Charlie, you can't ask a busy man like that to come all the way from the East. Even if you can reach him. You know he moves around so much. Oh, I'll and... reach him, all right, and he'll come for me. I'm named after him, and we're the only relatives he has, and besides... Do you know what? What, dear? Well, I can't explain it exactly. It's just a feeling, but... Somehow I think he wants to come. Hello, Postal Union. Will you take a telegram, please? To Mrs. Joseph Newton, Santa Rosa, California. Surprise, coming out to visit. Stop. Arrive Thursday and try and stop me. Love to all and a kiss for Charlie from her Uncle Charlie. That's right. Well, that's the signature, Uncle Charlie. How much? Uh, yes, sir, I've got the exact change right here. Yes, that was the message they handed me when I went into the telegraph office to send my wire to him. It was almost as though he'd heard me calling 2,000 miles away. And then, almost before we knew it, he had arrived. Tall and slim and such a boyish smile. No wonder Mother was so crazy about her brother, even seeing him so seldom. Oh, at dinner that night, he was completely charming and generous, too, with all the lovely presents he had brought. A little something for you, Joe. I hope you like it. Well, say, I've never had a wristwatch, Charles. You've got one now. Here, Emmy, this is for you. Oh, a fur scarf. Oh, Charles, I've always wanted oh, one. Oh, Mother, it's perfect, oh. and it's exactly right. Now, I expect to be paid for it, too. Paid for it? Oh, Joe, he means that banana cream pie. Oh. I'll go and bring it in. Hey, uh, wait, Emmy. I'll give you a hand. Uh, 
Oh, gave him quite a start, didn't I? <laughs> oh, no, Uncle Charlie. You've made us all very happy. Well, not yet. Not all of you. Here's your present, Charlie. Oh, I didn't mean that. I don't want a present. Please don't give me anything. Nothing? Why not? Well, I can't explain it, but... Well, it would spoil things if you were to give me anything. You're a strange girl, Charlie. Why would it spoil things? Because we're not just an uncle and a niece. It's something else. I know things about you. You do? Oh, yes. I know that you don't tell people a lot of things. Oh, I don't either. And I have a feeling that inside of you somewhere there's something nobody knows about. Something nobody knows? Something secret and wonderful. Oh, I'll find it out. It isn't good to find out too much, Charlie. Now, open your hand. There you are. Thank you. You haven't even looked at it. Well, I don't have to look. No matter what you gave me, it would be the same. Well, here, let me show you. It's a ring, an emerald ring, a real one. Oh, oh it's beautiful. And you've had something engraved on it. No, I haven't, but I will if you like. Oh, yes, you have, Uncle Charlie. It's very faint. See it? On the inside, T.S. from B.M. Why, it's someone's initials. Well, can you imagine that? That jeweler rooked me. He told me it was new. Here, I'll take it back, Charlie. Give it to oh, me. Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I like it this well, but way. But, Charlie, you don't want to go around Here with something... Here Charles. Your favorite dessert, if <laughs> I remember. You see, Uncle Charlie? I was meant to keep it. <laughs> yes, I... I suppose you were. You see, now it's something special between you and me. I'll never give it away to anyone. Charles, why don't you go inside? No. Oh, I need a little exercise, Emmy, to work off that meal. Oh, oh, you're not used to helping with the dishes. Nonsense. So where do I put these dry glasses? Oh, just set them on the cupboard. We'll be done in a jiffy. Uh, Charlie, be careful. That's the good set, you know. Maybe you'd better not sing. Oh, I can't get that tune out of my head. Maybe if someone told me what it is. It's a waltz. Yes, but what one? Well, your father would know. It's too bad he had to go to that meeting. Oh, it's the funniest thing. Sometimes I get a tune in my head like that, and pretty soon I hear someone else humming it, too. I think tunes jump from head to head. Da, 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 dee, da, da, da. Uncle Charlie, do you know what it is? Uh, why, uh, no, I, I don't. I know it's a waltz. And it's Victor Herbert. Yes, it's the, uh, 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 the Blue Danube waltz. No. Wait, I know. It's the Merry Wit. <coughs> uh, I'm sorry, Emmy, one of the good ones, too. Oh, oh, nonsense, Charles. We have plenty of glasses. <laughs> Mother, should we chase him out before he smashes the rest? That's a good idea, Charles. You march right into the parlor and sit yourself down. Alone? I bet that'll be fun. <laughs> no, it won't. Hmm? Oh, I mean, not if you read our evening paper. It's awful. Oh, uh, come in. I brought you some water, Uncle Charlie, in case you get thirsty during the night. Thank you, Charlie. That's very thoughtful. I see you've got the evening paper, too. You're going to read in bed? Oh, no. I'm going to leave it in Dad's room. He'll want to look through it when he gets home. <laughs> Hardly worth it, I'd say. Well, pleasant dreams. Uncle Charlie. Yes? Uncle Charlie, I know a secret about you you don't think I know. What secret? Remember I said you couldn't hide anything from me because I'd find it out? Well, I know there was something in the evening paper about you. About me in the evening paper? Mm hmm You read the paper and page three is gone. It was something about you, wasn't it? And you didn't want us to see it. But now that I know, you might as well tell me. <laughs> I guess you've got me, Charlie. Only it wasn't about me. It was someone I used to know. <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? You've got the page right there in your pocket. I can see it sticking out. Well, I think uh, I'll just... Stay out of my pocket. It's oh, none of your business. Uncle Charlie, you're hurting my wrist, your hand. Oh, no, Charlie, Charlie, I, I didn't mean to hurt you. I, I was just fooling. That story wasn't anything, just, just some gossip, not very pretty, not for you to read. Forget it, will you? Of course, if you say so. That's the girl. Good night, young Charlie. 
pleasant dreams. I guess I did forget about the paper, anyway, for a while. You see, the very next day, those survey men phoned. Them. They said we'd been picked as a typical family. And could they ask questions and take pictures and everything? Well, you can imagine we were pretty excited. All except Uncle Charlie. He seemed more annoyed. He went to his room and shut the door and wouldn't come out. And then when the survey men came over, I had to answer all the questions. You see, Mother was straightening up the kitchen for the picture, so I showed them both around the house. The upstairs, too. Mighty pleasant little home, Miss Newton. Well, I've been hoping we could do it over, Mr. Graham. Oh, but then maybe the pictures won't show all the details. I mean, the, that's such a small camera that Mr. Saunders has. This? Hey, this is a Leica. Sharpest lens in the world. Now, uh, don't you worry about the details. They'll be there all right. Oh. Now, tell me, uh, whose room is that? Oh, that's mine, but my uncle is using it now. Uh, could I get a picture? You know, a typical girl, typical room. Oh, well, my uncle's resting, Mr. Saunders. I really don't want to disturb him. Oh, naturally. Uh, say, is there a uh, back stairs? Oh, oh, yes, right down the hall. Then I'll bet you 50 cents your uncle is out. <laughs> oh, you're just trying to get Mr. Saunders in there to take a picture. Isn't he, Mr. Saunders? That's right. Besides, I know my uncle's in there. I'm still betting he isn't. Want to take me up? Oh, all right. Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie, may I come in? You see? Why, you were right. He's gone. Funny you should do a thing like that. Maybe you don't know him as well as you think you do. Of course I do. I know him very well. Are you trying to tell me I shouldn't think he's so wonderful? Well, not exactly. Someone coming up the porch, Jack. Oh, I always say the more the merrier. Miss Newton, is is that your uncle? Oh, why, yes, it is. Uncle Charlie. Guess I'll take a picture of the hall. Hey, what what I... are you trying to do with that flashlight? Blind me? Uncle Charlie, he was taking pictures of my room. I'm not in your room, and I don't like to be photographed. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you for the film, sir. I must insist. Give it to me, please. Okay, Fred. Let him have it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Well, that's that, I guess. Let's go. He was so strange. I don't understand it. I think I could help you out on that. You could? Sure. Suppose you have dinner with me tonight. Then we can sit in the park and have a nice long talk. And so I thought I'd better tell you. This job of mine isn't always easy, Charlie. Then you're really a detective. Oh, Charlie, listen. You're not on a survey at all. You lied to us. You just wanted to get into our house. Listen, Charlie, you've got to trust me. Well, you've done nothing but lie. You probably didn't even want to take me out tonight. Oh, but I did. Honestly, I did. You don't know what it meant to me to, to take you out and talk with you, and get to know you. Just part of your job. Oh, now, don't be silly. When I came to this town to find a man, I, I hadn't counted on you. I hadn't counted on your mother or your family. Find a man? What man? Well, we're not even sure if he's the right one. We won't know till they check that picture we wired east. The one we took of your uncle. But you gave that one back. No, we just gave him an empty roll of film. Another trick. And now, Charlie, My please. uncle hasn't done anything. He knows it would kill my mother if he did. Why don't you go away and leave me alone? Because you're a nice girl, Charlie. Because no matter what, you're going to help me do my job. Now, Charlie, think... How much do you know about your uncle? I know all I want to know. He's good and kind and generous. He came here and made us all happy. He hasn't done anything to... To what? To what, Charlie? Nothing. You wouldn't understand. It's something I've got to figure out for myself. Why, Charlie... Reading the newspaper in a public library. Don't you get it at home? Oh, oh yes, Miss Corcoran, but there was something a couple of days ago. I meant to copy it, and they threw it away. A, a recipe. Well, I hope you find it. And put the paper back when you're through. I'll find it all right. Can't be anything really awful. Not enough to... Murderous heart. 
police are conducting a coast-to-coast search for the man who strangled Thelma Shenley, former musical comedy star, wanted for the deaths of two other wealthy widows. The fugitive is known as the Merry Widow Murderer. You are listening to Hollywood Soundstage, where you have just heard Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler in Act One of the famous motion picture Shadow of a Doubt. Act Two will follow in just a moment. But meanwhile, here's something worth thinking about. Our armed forces, our factory workers, and our civilian defense volunteers are all doing an important job toward keeping America free. But there's something that all of us can do, something that will help Uncle Sam and help us, too. We can all contribute to the future security of our nation and ourselves by buying profitable, safe United States defense bonds regularly. Now, back to Hollywood Soundstage and Act Two of Universal International's great box office hit, Shadow of a Doubt, starring Jeff Chandler, Anne Blythe, and the Screen Guild players. I don't know how long I sat there in the library, staring at the paper and not seeing a thing. But suddenly I realized that I was chilled as though someone had drawn a blind across the sun. I tried to tell myself it wasn't true, but there was the ring, the ring he'd given me, the emerald with faint initials in the band, her initials, Thelma Shenley, the woman my uncle Charlie had killed. I walked for hours that afternoon trying to decide what I should do, and after dinner I walked some more. I was just at the park when I heard him call. Oh, Charlie. I hurried on, but he overtook me. I remember being frightened. What's your hurry, Charlie? Slow down, will you? I want to talk to you. Come on, let's sit on this bench. No. I said sit down. Oh, you're hurting my wrist again. Well, I, I'm sorry, Charlie. I guess I got excited. Can't blame me, really. Not when I see something coming between us two. Tell me, was it something those survey men told you, that fellow Graham? He's got nothing to do with it. I hope he never knows anything about you. Oh, now, Charlie, that's no way to talk. After all, I, I've been around a bit. I've been chasing around the globe since I was 16. Done some pretty foolish things, too. Made some pretty foolish mistakes. Nothing serious, just foolish. I mean, like, with... what's the matter? What are you staring at? Your hands. Charlie, now, don't start How imagining... How could you do things like that? You're my uncle, my mother's brother. We thought you were the most wonderful man in the world. What do you know? I know I said I'd never give this ring up. But I can't wear it now. Not with her initials in it. Here, take it. You think you know something, don't you? You think you're the clever little girl who knows something. What do you know about women like that? Have you ever seen them like I have... Every day in the best hotels, every day by the thousands, drinking their money, eating their money, losing their money at bridge, playing all day and night, smelling of money, proud of their money. Horrible, faded, fat, greedy women. But they're alive. They're human beings. Are they, Charlie? Are they human or are they fat, wheezing animals? Hmm? And what happens to animals when they get too fat and too old? Stop it, please. You see, you don't understand. All I want is a little help. From me? I, I'm so tired, Charlie. There's an end to the running a man can do. This is my last chance. You've got to help me. I, I count on you, Charlie. You said yourself there was something special between us. And think of your mother. It, it'd kill your mother. Charlie, give me this last chance. All right. If you'll go away. Where to, Charlie? Where should I go? Where do you want me I to I don't go? care anywhere. Just so you go away from here. I just 
haven't got a thing in the house for lunch, and I couldn't go to the market myself. Not with the cake in the oven. Charlie, I've never known you to stay in bed so late. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't sleep very well. Your Uncle Charlie's been asking for you. He's on the front porch. Oh, here's the list for the grocery deal. I'll run along, then. The back stairs again? Charlie, why do you always go that way? Those stairs are so steep. Uh, don't you want to tell your uncle good morning? Well, I'll see him when I get back. It's shorter this way. Well, watch yourself, dear. Oh, don't worry. I know these steps. Mother! Charlie! 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 What happened? Oh, I tripped. I think the step was lost. Oh, good heavens, Charlie. You might have been killed. Yes. I might have, but I wasn't. Yes? Oh, good evening, Charlie. Come in. I wanted you to know... I almost had an accident this morning. Yes, your mother told me. I was very worried. When are you leaving, Uncle Charlie? Leaving? My dear girl, do you know what I did today? I went down and put a little money in the bank. The bank where your father works. $40,000 in cash. Of course, there isn't quite 40000 left. Now I gave 1000 to the children's hospital, another 1000 to the community chest. It made your father quite important. When are you leaving? You know, I've been thinking, Charlie, I, I want to settle down, live in a place where people know me, have some, some money in the bank, some sort of business, be a part of this family. I see. But the sensible thing is to be friends with me. I can do a lot for you, Charlie. I can do a lot for all of you. Not you. We don't want anything from you. If you don't leave, I'll tell what I know. Don't be silly, Charlie. Who'd believe you? A waltz running through your head. You don't like the initials on a ring. You connect it all up with a newspaper clipping. And, and now you haven't even got the ring. You have it. I? Ridiculous. I, I gave it to you. You see? Uncle Charlie, I don't want you here. I don't want you to touch my mother. So go away, I'm warning you. Go away or I'll kill you myself. Do you know what it means to live in terror? I did. I knew he wouldn't stop at anything. At any moment, there might be another accident. And he'd be very sorry. And I'd be dead. My only weapon was the ring. If I could find the ring, I thought I'd frighten Uncle Charlie into leaving town. It was the next night that I got my chance. Mother had invited all our leading citizens to meet her brother. And while they were downstairs drinking Uncle Charlie's champagne, I was upstairs going through his things. It was rather late when I came down. Now, can't I persuade you, Reverend Phillips, just to drop... Oh, no, no, thanks. You know what the psalmist said, wine maketh glad the hearts of men. Oh, your gift to the church has given us cause enough to rejoice. Oh. And besides, I'm afraid my parishioners aren't overly familiar with the song. Well, I always <laughs> say that... Oh, there you are, Charlie. What kept you so long? I was looking for my ring, Uncle Charlie. Silly me, I thought I'd lost it. What an exquisite ring. It's an emerald, Mrs. Potter. A real emerald. Uncle Charlie gave it to me for a going-away present. What's that? Going away? Why, Charles... Isn't that what you said, Uncle Charlie... Didn't you tell me you were going away? I, uh, I, yes. Yes, I did. But Charles, I didn't oh, dream... I'm sorry, it. Emmy. I didn't expect it to, to happen so soon. But, well, I, I got an important message, you see. A, a very important message. I, I'm afraid I'll have to leave in the morning. Charles, I wish you didn't have to go. That's the way it is, Emmy. You can't always do the things you like. Uh oh, they're going to start. Uh, We'd better get off. Emmy, Charlie. Goodbye, Charles. You're right, won't you? Of course. Now, now watch yourself on those steps. Uh, goodbye, Charles. Goodbye. Oh, Charlie, wait a minute. I want to talk to oh, you. Oh, they'll be starting in a minute. Oh, we can stand right here on the platform. I, I want you to know I think you were right to make me leave. It's best for your mother, best for all of us. Oh, we're moving. Well, she's not very strong, you know. I, I don't think she could stand the shock. I remember once when she was a little <laughs> the girl. The train is moving. I've got to get off. Oh, don't be silly. Let me go. You're hurting my wrist, your hands. 
Let me go. Sorry. Let me go. I've got to do this, Charlie, since you know so much. Let me go, Uncle no, Charlie. No, no, not yet, Charlie. Please. Not till we're going a little faster. Please, let me go. Not till we meet the train Uncle that's Charlie. coming down the other track. Please. No mistakes this time. Please, Each little go. detail in its place. I've checked it all, you see. No. There it is now. It's coming Charlie. fast, Charlie. Please. Almost time to no. say goodbye. Almost time. No. They're having the funeral now. It's the biggest funeral Santa Rosa's ever seen. They were all so shocked when I told them how it happened. How Uncle Charlie slipped and fell beneath the train. They're playing the Merry Widow Waltz. I told them that's what Uncle Charlie would have wanted. I don't think I'll ever forget him. And they won't either. They'll always remember the time they heard the Merry Widow Waltz in church. have been listening to the Hollywood soundstage production of Shadow of a Doubt, starring Anne Blythe and Jeff Chandler. And here are the stars of our show, back on stage for a final and very well-deserved bow. Thank you very much, Hugh. But I think all the bows should go to the Motion Picture Relief Fund, which does such magnificent work here in Hollywood. This radio program helps support that work, and all of us are proud to share in it by appearing here. Right, Anne? Beyond the shadow of a doubt, Jeff. <laughs> The entire motion picture industry is joining forces to make this half hour one of the highlights of the radio week. And you'll agree they're doing a wonderful job when you hear what Hugh Douglas has to promise you for next week. Oh, right, and since Hugh is just about to pop with his very important information, I guess it's time for us to bow our way out. Good night, everybody, and thanks again. Thank you all. Good night. Next week on Hollywood Soundstage, a powerful and absorbing story of the Old West, 20th Century Fox Studios' unforgettable picture, The Oxbow Incident, starring Charlie Ruggles, Edward Arnold, and an all-star supporting cast. The Oxbow Incident, next Thursday night at the same time. Be sure and listen. Shadow of a Doubt was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who will soon release Bend of the River, a Technicolor production starring James Stewart, Arthur Kennedy, Julia Adams, and Rock Hudson. Jeff Chandler can now be seen in Flame of Araby, co-starring with Maureen O'Hara. And Anne Blythe will soon be seen as Gregory Peck's co-star in The World in His Arms, both Universal International Technicolor Productions. Also appearing in tonight's cast were Junius Matthews, Virginia Gregg, Jane Morgan, Bob Bruce, and Jerry Hausner. Hollywood Soundstage was transcribed in the film Capital. Our play was adapted and directed by Harry Cronman. There's Waxworks busting out all over. Yes, for 30 minutes every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. For a full hour on Saturday nights, you're invited to Robert Q's Waxworks on most of these same CBS radio stations. Enjoy tonight's big Waxworks show on CBS radio. Hugh Douglas speaking. And remember those lovable rascals, Amos and Andy, are here every Sunday on the CBS radio network.